Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock Metal Podcast. I am your host, John Harris, and today on Rock Metal Podcast, we have Lurking Fear. They have a new album called Death, Madness, Horror, Decay, released on November 19th via Century Media, Century Media <clears throat> Records. Right now, I'm being joined by Jonas to share some more information about this stellar release, what the boys are up to here of their sophomore album. So, Jonas, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Absolutely great to have you on. Now, very silly question. Am I saying your name right? Is it Jonas or is it Jonas? Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Jonas or Jonas. It's <laughs> <laughs> whatever rocks your boat. <laughs> I'm glad that you said rocks your boat because when people say whatever floats your boat, I'm like, yeah, well, no. <laughs> water, water floats my boat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now in the pair boats. <laughs> yeah. Now, in the parallel universe that is Lurking Fear, we're going to talk about this album, Death, Madness, Horror, Decay, sophomore album. What was the intention with this record? Because it's the second album. Yeah. What were you guys looking to do, maybe differently or just in general with this record? Uh, I don't know. Just uh, at, at first, we just started writing songs as usual. I mean, but it's it, it came out pretty different from the start when we started writing because the first album was done in such a pace you know we formed the band and started writing like off the bat and we, we all of a sudden we had all the songs ready in like three months or something and then recorded the album and uh, so everything was a you didn't really have time to reflect on anything when we did the first one uh, we did a lot more reflecting on this one and uh, put a lot more time into the arranging of the songs and and kind of like how we wanted the album to f feel, you know. It's uh, and uh, personally, I think the this album is a lot like better put together. It sounds more cohesive than the the first one, I think. Okay, how is that? What what was different about I don't know, maybe the writing process or whatever that made it more cohesive. Uh, we wrote it kind of in sections this time. We wrote like over like a period of a year almost. Uh, wrote maybe like two, three songs, and then we didn't write anything for a couple of months, and then write a couple of more. And and I think it, we kind of like focused on the songs we were working on on at the time then, and uh, kind of worked a bit more on the demos. Uh, I mean, this time around. I did all the demos uh, uh, instead of like last time, uh, like Andreas did all his songs, the demos for his songs. I mean, Adrian put the drums on the demos and Thomas his vocals. But so this time we kind of focused on having the same sound on everything when we actually <laughs> did the demos. So, <laughs> so you can have like a better look at how the album was going to turn out. You can juggle the, the songs a bit more and, oh, where do we want this song on the record? And I always try to, when I write, I always kind of write with a, already in my mind where the song is going to be on the record. Mm -hmm. Just like, oh, I want this to be the, I'm going to write the song that's going to be the last song on side A, you know, on the vinyl. Yeah. And, and that kind of brings out that kind of vibe in the song. Instead of like, like, oh, I think we put this song there, this song there. And it's, it's a lot more thinking around that when we did this album. Yeah. Is that because of the pandemic you guys had more time or would it have happened anyway? I, I mean, I think it's uh, the pandemic. Sure, it has a lot, had a lot of t to do with it. And, uh, and for me personally, it brought out a lot of creativity. And I mean, in all of us, you know, because there was you couldn't do any shows. So just sit around on your ass. You just might as well write music, you know. So <laughs> That thing that you do, you know, write, yeah. write music. Otherwise, you go out and play. You have to write the music also. <laughs> yeah, I know that that part of it. Um, cool. Thought more about how you wanted the album to feel. And something else you mentioned was thinking in terms of vinyl, actually. So thinking in terms yeah. of not just an album, but there's an A side, there's a B side. And there's a story to tell on the A side and a story to tell on the B side. Maybe take us yeah. a maybe take us a bit through that. What kind of a story did you want to tell between the A side and the B side? Uh, uh, you mean musically or? 
musically, I guess, would be a, a good place to start. Yeah, I, th- I think, I mean, I always think of, in terms of vinyl, when I think of albums, you know, I, I really want to write an album, not like a couple of good songs and then the rest is fillers, you know, so it's... Yeah, and, uh, the it's 90s. Always, yeah, yeah, the 90s, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when everyone everyone was doing like what supposedly we would be in double album like in the seventies or even now, you know. So yeah, only a few got away with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the two discs you oh, said. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's uh, it's. Uh, I think it's always more interesting to think about it that way because the the music flows differently and. Even if you listen to it, I mean, on Spotify or whatever, you, I want it to feel like you're actually changing sides, you know, that, that, that's like closing a chapter, the side A, and then opening a new chapter on side B, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned the words chapter, and I know we kind of chatted about whether we should talk about, I guess, lyrics or music. Can we chat, can we chat about lyrics? What are these chapters about? Is there like a theme to the record? Uh, well, I don't think it's a general theme. Uh, like, I mean, the first album, Thomas' lyrics were more as all of them were like H.P. Lovecraft influenced. And uh, there's still a, a lot of H.P. Lovecraft on this one, but uh, it's kind of more in the background, I think. It's just, as you say, lurking. <laughs> yes, yes, lurking behind. Yeah. I mean, he was uh, he was writing the lyrics for the Davis at the Gates record at the same time. So a lot of the stuff that he was doing on that record kind of bled through on this one, too. Uh, like this, uh, the darkness about pessimism and stuff. And <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. The lurking fear. I would hope that there is some darkness and some pessimism. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not exactly happy songs, you know. No. No, oh. somewhere in the death, the madness, the horror, and the decay, I imagine there's, you know, bliss and serenity. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, the dots between every word is the bliss and serenity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly, baby. Now, something, uh, when, I'm not an HP, I don't read HP Lovecraft, but when I was doing research for this interview, that popped up right in my face because uh, I guess he wrote a, a book or a story or something called Lurking. Lur- yeah. yeah. Um, so that was going to be one of my really ignorant questions is, so is this an HP Lovecraft band? (laughs) (laughs) And it sounds like it kind of is, but I think something a little more interesting is you're listed in a few places in the world as the Mellotron guy. So take us, take us through this. Do you have real Mellotrons or real Mellotrons on the record? Uh, it's it's the, the digital one, the, the 4,000 M. Uh, that's the one I use. Uh, I don't have. I have a bunch of friends who have real ones. So sometimes I, I'm a. Ava- I'm able to actually do some stuff on a real one. But uh, lately, I'm just. It's easier to use the the digital one, which is really good. You know, the guy who makes them here in Sweden, he he builds the real ones too. So. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I did not know that they were still manufactured. I thought everybody yeah, had one. Him and a guy from, uh, I think he's from Canada originally, actually, David Keane. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, him and this guy called Marcus from Stockholm. Because Marcus was the go-to guy here in Sweden when the this uh, new wave of progressive rock bands came out in the early 90s. And they started using the Mellotron. Uh, bands like Anecdoten and Landberg and Englegard. And uh, he knew how to fix them. <laughs> and then uh, David acquired like all the old master tapes for all the sounds. Yeah. And they started building new ones. So okay. I think they've been building them for like 20 years now or something, like 15 or 20 years. Mm-hmm. And the digital one came maybe like 10 years ago or something like that. I don't know. Okay. Um, which which sound do you do? You, a very cool instrument, so. Yeah, which sound do you fancy most? The boys' choir or the uh, the violins? Uh, well, most I, the Mark II sound is still. I mean, the violins and the flutes and the, especially I love the brass. Mm-hmm. You know, so and I love all since it's based on Chamberlain uh, from the beginning. You know, a lot of the Chamberlain stuff is really cool. I think. Yeah. 
and uh, using the the steel guitar is really cool also if you use the pitch you can actually make it sound like a pedal steel guitar so. mm. very cool a weird pedal steel guitar but <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, there's there's a couple of players that i really admire when it comes to playing especially the chamberlain actually yeah uh, this guy called uh, patrick warren uh, he he played a lot with uh, madonna actually in the 80s mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he does some really cool stuff when he actually opens it up and uses the wheel like to make it sound like really like weird he he just makes him in him and john bryan are the like the masters of that and uh, mitchell Froome is a cool guy too i have to mention brian kihu also which is like he had a band called moog cookbook in, in the 90s mm-hmm. i think which is just mini moogs <laughs> really <laughs> cool all right, we've got a couple of music videos <clears throat> for the release, of the release of the album Cosmic Macabre and Death Reborn. Yeah. Take us through these tracks, however it is that you want to take us through them, maybe from your perspective or what it is that you input onto uh, them. Well, when we, we actually did those two videos like back-to-back on the same day, yeah. uh, mainly because we had Adrian here and, like, Let's make the most of it, you know. We made two videos in a day, and uh, when we were discussing which, like, which is going to be the first single, and we we went for Cosmic Macabre because it's. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of short songs on this record. Uh, that one is. I mean, it's not a long one, really. It's it's a lot longer than Death Reborn, but it kind of had all the elements of the record. It's got. It's really like fast and and at the same time heavy and some weird stuff too in there. Just some Voivod stuff thrown in there. Mm-hmm. You can't get enough Voivod, right? Never, never. No. It's like hot and, sauce. It's got to go on everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the Mellotron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and uh, so that that song is kind of like more of a proper song like that. So I thought it was a first choice. A uh, very good choice for the first single. And then Death Reborn, we just thought it's just one minute and what is it, 10 seconds or something like that. But it's still got like three verses and three choruses and <laughs> some screaming guitars at the end. So it's it's a proper song, but it's <laughs> little over a minute. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Well, when you guys were writing, for example, that kind of a song and you could have made it longer... I guess what was the decision not to make it longer? Did it just feel right? Yeah, that was actually the, the last song written for the album. Uh, I think Andreas had written uh, his uh, another song right before it, and he just got like uh, we always talk about Sadus a lot. You know, we all love Sadus, and uh, especially the first album. And he was like, uh, like the day after he wrote the song before that, he just sent us this like rough demo with just the riffs and we were like yeah that's a total sadal song it's just uh um, maybe we should do something more on it no (laughs) just leave it like that (laughs) groovy all right two videos in one day that must have been an exhausting day take us through that day actually i mean it it, sure it was exhausting you know i think actually the the whole setting up everything and carrying equipment and stuff was a lot more exhausting than actually making the videos. But it t- I think it took us like five hours in total. Wow. That's not so, too bad. Uh, yeah. It was pretty fast. I mean, this is guy called Max that I, he, he did the videos. I worked with him before and he, he works really fast. You know, it's like no messing about and no like unnecessary takes and stuff. He, he knows what he's doing. So, mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So we've got the record, sophomore album, Death, Madness, Horror, Decay, a couple of music videos, Cosmic Macabre, Death Reborn. Album is out now. We also chatted a lot about Mellotrons, Rush Beer, writing the album for vinyl. There it is is right there. Uh, Something else you kind of mentioned was that Thomas was also working on uh, the At The Gates record, and that had a bit of breadcrumbs into this one is that i don't know evident for for you like is there do you think that the album would have turned out differently if he hadn't been working on well, it? i mean i don't i don't know i mean it's two completely different things you know i mean 
But Thomas referred to this, the Lurking Fear album, as the ugly stepchild of uh, the <laughs> Well, how does that make you feel? I mean, which is kind of true. I mean, we all, I mean, both, uh, we're three of us playing at the gates. So, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of, it's not, I've, I've gotten the, the question a lot that if, if we like trying to, if it's hard to like, not make stuff sound like at the gates, but it's not really that hard, you know, because it's not uh, the same thing, you know. So, yeah, yes. at the gates, a lot more. I don't want to say pretentious, but uh, pretentious is good actually in music, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, not pretentious playing, but pretentious songwriting is really good, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, and at the gates, it's a lot more. Uh, how do, how do I put it? It's it's got a lot more depth than Lurk and Fear has, you know, or uh, it's more serious, actually. And uh, I mean, the Lurk and Fear is a serious band, you know, but we don't like take ourselves too seriously. Mm-hmm. We really don't in At The Gates either. But uh, I mean, you see the, the differences. Uh, if you listen to it, it's you see there's no like orchestras or choirs or stuff like that in, in the lurking fear you know so that yeah. the gates have that so i think it's a it's a best of both worlds i think mm-hmm. yeah no that makes sense last time actually one of the last uh shows that i saw was when you guys came through edmonton in september of 2019 yeah with damon Marth. uh-huh yeah 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 i was nice. Sorry? That was a nice show. <laughs> <laughs> is it easier if I to remember correctly? <laughs> I was going to say is it easier to remember because it was one of the last ones? Uh, was it one of the last ones? Well, I don't know. Maybe. If, uh, kind of, I well, sh- yeah. Did the tour end in LA this time around? Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah. Uh, well, usually we go from Canada down on the on the west coast, so yeah. I think it was probably one of the like seven last shows, probably. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, I got to sit yeah. down. Got to sit down with Martin, so that was fun. fun to play him, so. Yeah, I got to sit down with Martin, so that was fun. Chat about yeah. some things, and I had actually just watched uh, an episode of Nail the Mix with the um, Russ Russell. Yeah, and he was breaking down mixing and recording and and uh even mastering the track so that was kind of cool to get a little more in depth with martin on the yeah. some, some of the guitar parts and things that were going on and i mean that kind of is a fun question because that came up also as well there is okay we've got the haunted that russ russell's doing and we've got at the gates that russ russell's doing and a lot of similar band members how do we make it sound different and now we've got a third one into the picture <laughs> how do we make it how do we make it all sound different but you kind of yeah, answered. Russ, Russ didn't do our album, and he didn't do the latest at the Gates album either. So no, he didn't. Yeah. Um, just at that time, I remember that conversation coming yeah, yeah, up. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you had mentioned it here. Like, people ask how how do you guys end up sounding different? Um, you know, so I guess you're good at answering that question. But I guess is it like an intention, or is it just having a couple different members that makes it? It's a, it's not an intention at all. It just turns out that way, really. Yeah, I mean, it's as a, I mean, it's not like we have a we have this band, three of us playing another band. We don't think about like, oh, maybe it sounds like at the gates or whatever. We just write whatever comes out, and, and it's just a completely different entity, really. You know, so I mean, and I haven't written any music so far for at the gates i mean jonas has written all the music for the last two records so and uh, i mean he's been bugging me both me and martin about writing stuff but when he gets going you know he just runs with it and it's just i i mean i have no like uh ego that i have to write stuff in, in at the gates so because jonas does brilliant stuff but i mean and i write a bit more in lurking fear but and and I have my style of writing, you know. Uh, I mean, Andreas and Fred are a bit more punkish than I am mm-hmm. in their style, you know. So I'm a bit more intricate. <laughs> Pret- I think we use the word pretentious. <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah. As we say about record collectors, pretentious <laughs> assholes. 
I knew it as soon as you mentioned the word vinyl. Yeah. And so you are a massive record collector then. Yeah. Do you listen like to the to the, do you listen to the vinyl as well or just collect it? No, of course I listen to it. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's kind of the point. <laughs> okay. I mean, I even, I even listen to records that I buy that are really expensive, you know, so I have to listen to them at least once. Yeah. How do you feel about the sound of vinyl against the digital counterpart? Uh, I mean, we are, you're talking about streaming and stuff. Yeah, I mean, CD, we could talk about CD, but it, I don't know. If you have a CD player, I don't. I actually do now, but I didn't have one for like years. But I mean, I rarely use it because I have maybe like 50 CDs or something. Yeah. And those, you, and th- those CDs are actually stuff that's not available on vinyl. And some of them aren't, aren't even available on streaming platforms. So. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I, I need to have them there. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Very that's true. The only, you just need to have it there. Uh, that's the the motto of a record collector. You know, it just, it just needs to be there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cool. All right. Death, madness, horror, decay out now via Century Media Records. In the show notes down below for the YouTube video, there's going to be the band's Facebook, facebook.com slash the lurking fear official. Is that the best place to reach you guys? Uh, probably, yeah. That on or Instagram. Okay. We don't have an official homepage or anything, so. Okay. Groovy. And then there's going to be the links to the two music videos, Cosmic Cobb and Death Reborn as well. We've chatted about, I think, everything that's important, including Rush Beer, Mellotrons, and Vinyl. Yeah. That's pretty much my life. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Sweet. And we snuck some Canada in there as well, I think. Yeah. Which is good. And some HP Lovecraft to a degree. Awesome. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today, Jonas. Thank you very much for having me.